so when I was in the other room, everybody kept saying, happy Indie Cave. And it's like a holiday, and I felt the same way. So happy Indie Cave to all of you. It's, it's really, I'm really liking this place for the award show this year. It's like, it's so neat to do something different every year. Um, welcome. And, you know, all of you know what Indie Cave's about, or you wouldn't really be here, but what's so neat about um, what we do is that we get to celebrate such amazing games. And especially when things have been kind of confusing in the game industry lately, it's so fantastic to be in a place together that's loving games, loving game developers. And I'm really proud of, of, of the way that, um, that we're so respectful and, and, and our integrity of everything that we do. And I'm glad to share with you. I just want to thank everybody in the room and of course beyond this room too, but you know, it's all about the people that create these great games that we love, all the people that support the making independent and innovative games, all the people who work like crazy making Indicate happen, which is a lot of people. <laughs> You know, it's like that there's so many wonderful people. It's just been, it's a blessing to be around everybody. Um, and I especially want to thank our awards hosts tonight, Tracy Fullerton and Frank Lance. Who yeah. Yeah. They're inspirations. So. Um, and speaking of inspirations, um, now we're going to see some video of the nominees. with at least two ears, three mouths, four eyes, and two fingers between you.
a game where two to four players compete in building an abstract tree that's different every single time you play. Grow appeals to anyone. <laughs> to the Martian Agricultural Convention. Players move around the board, collecting cows and staying away from the farmer. Passing over crop circles produces weird effects in the form of cards. <laughs>
stage our hosts for the evening, Tracy Fullerton and Frank Lance. to the 2014 uh, Indicate Awards. Uh, each year, this event is, my god, I'm so excited, I can barely even say what they have on the cards. <laughs> this event recognizes 36 nominees, chosen by the Indicate jury as reflecting the quality, artistry, innovation, and breadth of games. And also interaction. <laughs> uh, selected from almost 1,000 submissions this year, the process of choosing the nominees is incredibly difficult, and the Indicate jury cannot possibly nominate every excellent submission, especially since they all need to be sent to Zoe Quinn for final approval. <laughs> decided that we weren't going to try to be funny tonight, um, and instead we were just going to be uh, a little bit sincere and hopefully, because that's more who we are. So, exactly. Exactly. so I apologize, Heartfelt. Heartfelt. Yes. I apologize to, to, the, to the nice guy who wrote all the, wrote all the jokes, but, uh, you know, for example, there was one joke about Pac-Man, and it was, the joke was that Pac-Man was about eating disorders. Right, exactly. Which, you know, and the humor is that, look how far we've come, um, now that we have games that deal with serious issues, emotional and psychological issues. Yeah. You know, but the thing is, yes. here's what I was thinking, so Toro Iwatani, when he made Pac-Man, that he actually was challenging conventions and doing something kind of risky, right? This was a time when all these uh, arcade games were basically clones of Space Invaders. They were all games about shooting aliens. And Iwatani said, how can I make a game that appeals to a broader audience, right? right? How can I make a game that, that appeals to women? You know, and and he thought about uh, uh, about characters and and how to capture characters in in code. It's sort of lovely color design, right? I mean, it's much more appealing. So like, yeah, I mean, Pac-Man actually is interesting and in, in all the ways that we like and and all the things that are important about indie games. And tonight we want to celebrate and reclaim that kind of creative intention because we think that that's not something that we are. It's not like an advancement. This is something that actually is at the heart of all games. Yeah, what we love about indie games is the way they are original and personal and driven by a vision and challenge conventions and take risks. And whether that's in, in AAA or in whatever context, let's reclaim that for, for what we love and what we're celebrating. Let's so, own it. So that's what we're going to do. No jokes yeah. tonight. No jokes about Pac-Man. No jokes about Pac-Man. To it. The 36 games that are nominated this year are an incredible reflection of diversity, brilliance, and independent games. To share a little bit of the brilliance with you, we'll be reading brief juror comments on each of the 36 nominees throughout the night between the awards selected by the jury. So to start us off, here are some comments from our jurors. Risk of rain. Well-developed aesthetics, addictive great gameplay, forces the player to make difficult strategic choices. Nova 111. Excellent merging of real-time and turn-based strategy. Loved exploring your environments and mechanics. Never alone. Compelling and visually striking. The representation of indigenous peoples through narrative, aesthetic, and language is remarkable. Pepper Heist. Well-constructed with delightful artwork. Combines a simple mechanic and a ridiculous premise into a hilarious tabletop experience. All right, let's give some awards. The first award of the night is that for uh, visuals. Uh, Develop, uh, developers bring unique vision, uh, both literally and figuratively, to interactive media, exploring a wide range of visual styles. This award honors the quality and originality of art direction and the ability to make visual design central to games. So, here's what our jury had to say about the winner of this first award. From its minimalist film noir art style to its stunningly lifelike animation, the visuals in this game are spectacular. <laughs> But what really makes them stand out is how integral they are to the mechanics of the game. The visuals in this game don't just enhance the experience, 
they create the experience. The winner is Framed. I just wanted to thank Ollie and Stu for their amazing animation and art. Um, also, as you all know, things have been very difficult in the game industry right now, but um, having this, like being at events like this just means so much, and having the support of all you and friends that I've made is so important. So, I love all of you. Thank you. <laughs> simple and approachable. The core game allows for a high degree of physicality, strategy, and improvisation. Service. Clear, relevant, quickly understandable, seemed to capture the essence of LARPing in a minimalist setting and was very intriguing. Private Eye. Great grounding in the scene. Love that it looks past the obvious for VR. Icebound. The UI conventions worked really well. I really enjoyed crafting stories with the game's mechanics. Our next award is the Technology Award. The craft of game development is inseparable from the medium in which it exists. This award honors the use of the medium to create an expression that simply couldn't have been possible otherwise. Let me ask you a question, Tracy. How do you guys incorporate the discipline of software engineering, of programming, into the game design department at USC? We have a very simple mantra, everybody codes. Okay, yeah, that's how we do it, basically. It's the, which is not to say that it, we're trying to turn everyone into a programmer. Some people are programmers and some people are not. But it, as a fundamental literacy, our approach, I think, as yours, is if you want to be a game designer, you should know how to code. Absolutely, basis, yeah. even if you're very bad at it. Yep, yep, that's, what, that's how we do it. All right, uh, here's what our jurors had to say about uh, the winning game in this category. <laughs> This game harnesses social streaming technology, crafting communal play from community in a space where many craft divisiveness and exploitation. And the winner is Choice Chamber. Oh, yeah! say wow when they come up. Thank you. Uh, so this is for technology? Yes. Okay, so we're hoping we're hoping that like in the very near future everyone who makes a game can do this and it's not a technological barrier. We want everyone to have games that incorporate social things coming from everyone watching because everyone watching games is the new big thing. Uh, so thank you everyone. Thank you Chelsea. Thank you uh, Sandro who actually wrote all the code that does all the technology stuff that you're all <laughs> awarding us for. Uh, this is awesome. Thank you everybody. comments. Elbow Room. The minimalist design is charming and works well with the mayhem occurring on and off screen. Achieves artistic goals while remaining approachable. Line. I love how the game communicates. The way it tells me that I can't draw a line, there's a connection missing, the level is complete. All are beautiful. Ether One. Good puzzles, dialogue, and aesthetics in support of simple but engaging mechanics. The focus on dementia was refreshing and well done. Dre. The aesthetics are not only charming, but also made me want to experiment and explore. The sound design provides awesome feedback. Oh, here we go. We're going to do another award now. Uh, <laughs> the next one. Let's, let's give away the, the award for audio. <laughs> sound and music are key to the interactive experience. Audio is not only a way to give feedback, but is also the best way to create ambience and emotional tone in a game. This award honors the game that conjures the world through sound and silence. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, here's, 
what the jury had to say about the winner of this category. This game asks us to explore sound. It creates a musical, explorative aspect, making each section of the world a joy and a sound adventure with surprises around each corner. The winner is Fract. <laughs> nor Quinn know anyone that worked on Fract. Uh, Fract couldn't be here tonight, uh, but we are here to represent Fract, and Fract is very dear to all of us. Um, Adam, do you have anything to say? Uh, it's a marvel of aesthetic and music <laughs> production. Uh, I played it for the last couple weeks and felt this big uh, while enjoying it entirely. Yeah. I know that they put their heart and soul into this game, and it's, uh, it's a real feat. So thank you so much on behalf of them. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm uh, from Indie Fund, and we helped fund Fract. And I want to say that in addition to paying Frank 20 bucks so that we can win the award, uh, we actually rejected this game the first time that it came to us. So I want to convince everybody when you get punched in the face and someone tells you your game sucks, yeah. that you should keep making it and make it better, and then you come back, and then you'll win. <laughs> Uh, from our jurors. Uh, use of force. The virtual world looks real and I was shocked. Engaging and thought-provoking. Red shirt. Well-written and funny. Love the idea of a lifestyle progression game skewering social networks and sci-fi. Soul fill. Interesting, innovative premise. A game through which people can secretly interface with the outside world. Slap 45. Incredibly entertaining. The mechanics lead directly from the setting to create a hectic, engaging experience. All right, our next category is the Story World Award. Games create their worlds through a unique form of writing and storytelling. This award honors the special craft of revealing narrative through interaction, creating a world that players want to inhabit and explore. And here's what the jurors said about our winner. <clears throat> this game is an interactive work of brain-bending science fiction, evocative of Jorge Luis Borges, told through two different media that brings the player into the writing process of an equally compelling work of what may or may not be uh, fiction. And the winner is Icebound. so blown away uh, by the, the, the stuff that you see it indicate the quality of work of so many different kinds of games that all comes together. It's just mind-blowing. So just to be nominated has always been amazing for me and to win something just I can't even process it. So thank you so much. <laughs> from our jurors. Keep talking and nobody explodes. I love the way it makes us work as a team. A really interesting and innovative use of the Oculus. Affordable space adventures. Shows what can be done and fun with the second screen experience. Has great feel drawing me in the whole time. Henka Twist Caper. Very easy to pick up and lovely to play. Great blend of teamwork and competition. It encourages players to get rough, but not necessarily violent. Bro. <laughs> this game is beautiful. Every single game creates a different art installation. Just touching the pieces feels great. And now, the next award is the Interaction Award. Designing the possibility space where the player meets the systems in any game is a craft unto itself. This award honors those games that focus on the moment-to-moment -moment player interaction. Here's what the jury said about the winner of this category. This game does what games can do best. Playfully subvert our social codes of conduct, forcing us to interact in ways that we normally wouldn't. The Interaction Award is all about this, how games can put us into direct contact with each other, ourselves, and the system of the game. The winner is Soul Phil. So, 
this game, uh, come see it on Saturday and Sunday. Woo! Uh, it was a global game jam game. Uh, and if it wasn't for that sort of thing, like, I don't know if I'd be making games, so go game jams. from our jurors. Mini Metro, the minimal visual aesthetic works perfectly for the source material. Gameplay was a fun and engaging model of a real world system. How do you do it? Hilarious and great. Surprisingly relatable. The combination of the controls and the visceral sound feedback was awkward and satisfying. <laughs> Loom the game. Striking to behold and immediately inviting. Simultaneously installation art and playground equi equipment invites a fluidity of spontaneous invention. Metrica. Puzzles are fun and visually exciting. Love the idea of creating challenges and levels through data generated by me playing the game. Our next award category is the Impact Award. Games can have an impact in many ways, through social messages, by shifting the perception of games as a medium, even by making us rethink our definition of the word game. This award honors games that are actively seeking to make a difference in the world. Here's what our jury had to say about the winner. How can we use the powerful technologies of interactive media and games to affect the way people see the world? It's a question at the heart of many projects you see at Indicate. For this game, it is both a question and an answer. And most importantly, it's an experience created using technologies and designs that exist together only in our medium. The winner is Use of Force. Represent uh, Noni de la Peña. This is not here with us tonight, but uh, still we're very proud of that. It's a very difficult story to tell. Uh, you'll come and check it out. It's called Use of Force, and um, it's not fun to be beaten up. But uh, through games, we can make a change. Thanks a lot. Yeah. more words from our judges. I.O. Visuals and music help set the stage for a compelling and impressive game. Hack and Slash. I was completely captivated by the hacking mechanic, and the presentation <laughs> is great. Slash is not bad either. <laughs> N plus plus. Love the level, level design and game feel. Co-op levels are hard and incredibly fun. Cup of Quest, a magical experience. Conversations turn to role play as we collaborated and discussed how to achieve our goals. All right, now it's time for the Game Design Award. This award honors the unique quality of gameplay that engages us with an experience or subject in a way that only games can. This can entail a simple twist to a familiar genre, the stellar execution of familiar mechanics, or inventing a totally new mode of play. Here's what our jury had to say about the game that won this category. <clears throat> game design is experimentation, iteration, and inspiration. This game is a game that allows for player experimentation, that harnesses repeated iterative action, and brings out cutthroat competitive play together to create something beautiful and unique. The winner is Grow. We both uh, have most of our background in digital games, but Grow is a physical game. Um, and it's been an interesting experience taking, I guess, tabletop play into a 3D space. Uh, and I guess the one thing I want to say is that uh, I don't think games, we need to draw a line anymore between physical and digital or anything. They're all just games, and they all have their own place. And 
And uh, now a few more quotes from our jurors. Coffee, a misunderstanding. Awkwardness simulator is a fitting description. It's a very interesting blend of many types of communication and identity issues. Antimatter matters, a quantum physics board game. Love the appealing visuals. Straightforward instructions make an unapproachable subject feel understandable. Close Castles, a fast and furious tower defense game enabled by crisp, clear, beautiful UI. Tons of multiplayer fun. Mm. Frat. Each section of the world is a joy to explore to see what kind of sound adventure will come of it. This game is fascinating and the sound design is incredible. And uh, now the Trailblazer Award. Yes. And now to present the Trailblazer Award, please welcome to the stage Indicate Festival Chair Celia Pierce. <laughs> Um, so, uh, when Albert Einstein was once asked how long it took him to come up with the theory of relativity, he said something along the lines of five minutes and my whole life. <laughs> and I think the same could be said of our trailblazer this year, Alex Rogopoulos, who, uh, whose overnight success was a couple of decades in the making. Um, so Harmonics, of course, the company that Alex founded and the revolution that they created in both uh, the music industry and the game industry cannot really be understated. It's probably one of the greatest success stories of an independent developer of all time, albeit with its ups and downs. What undergirds the company's history is a common quality shared by everyone in this room, vision, creativity, and imagination. Alex had an idea, which he spent his whole career realizing, to give people the feeling of playing music without actually having to learn to play an instrument. Alex and Iran brought together their love of both music and programming to bring this vision to fruition. It's a tremendous honor to me to present this award to Alex. He was actually the first person that we wanted to give this award to, and for various reasons we weren't able to, so we've been waiting a while to be able to do this. Um, I first met him back in the 20th century when uh, I worked in the theme park industry and I was brought on to do some consulting on a product that was essentially an air guitar where you could play a guitar by just stroking your fingers up and down in the middle of the air with this kind of guitar thingy. It was absolutely magical and we were trying to figure out who to sell it to and it was kind of challenging. But a decade later, uh, with a few mainstream games under their belts, Harmonix again became an overnight success by going back to this original idea of being able to feel like you were playing a musical instrument. Wow. And I think the world, the gaming industry, and the public finally caught up with the idea of having a custom controller as part of a mainstream video game. So Guitar Hero and Rock Band have revolutionized both the game industry and the music industry. Uh, they launched a whole paradigm shift in interface design for games. They created this pitch-perfect intergenerational experience uh, of, of a fantasy. Who doesn't want to be a rock star? And uh, in the process, they managed to expand the audience of games and also to expand uh, the reach. And many journalists have cited, them, have cited these games as really the most influential games of the first decade of the 21st century. Although it was slow in coming, these games also revolutionized the music industry, which had been flailing around trying to figure out what to do about games for a decade. Um, and they realized that, no, this wasn't a copyright threat. It was actually a way to bring new music to a new audience and uh, engage with their content in a different way. Um, there was a, there, uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, I have some friends in the music industry and one of the running jokes that they have is that um, a lot of them play these games on their tour buses and many musicians are actually unable to play their own games in uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band. So Harmonix is continuing to innovate in the music game genre. Uh, they've developed Dance Central, which was one of the earliest Kinect games and are currently working on uh, their own independent title, Chroma. And I don't think anyone should be surprised by the fact that they were selected by Disney to carry on the Fantasia legacy with the Fantasia game, which they're currently working on. Yeah. Yeah. And Alex 
Alex also has a special place in our heart. He's been a supporter of IndyK from the very beginning, and in my previous day gig at Georgia Tech, he was also a supporter of the Guthman Musical Instrument Contest, where people would come and invent new musical instruments. So he's engaged in the community and helping to support anybody that is trying to innovate in these areas. As an IndyK trailblazer, Alex is a role model for the potential reach and influence of indie developers. His company revol revolutionized both games and music, and have managed to weather the ups and downs of both. Next year, Harmonix will celebrate its 20th anniversary, and Indicate very proudly presents this award to Alex as we look forward to the next 20 years of creativity and innovation at the intersection of games and music. tonight that I actually with a uh, mixed emotion that uh, I get a lifetime achievement flavored award because uh, it just totally reminds me that I'm not quite as young a man as I once was and I'm a bit older than most all of the people in the room tonight um, but hopefully I have a few years of troublemaking left in me. Um, but actually it is uh, a little bit uh, emotionally uh, complicated to, to be singled out for an award like this. Um, I, I do have to just say that, um, of course, I'm in incredibly grateful to be acknowledged in this way, but it is a simple truth that every game that uh, Harmonix ever made was a collaboration of a large group of passionate, committed people uh, with me along the way. So it's kind of a little embarrassing for me to uh, stand uh, up here and accept this as, as just one of them. Um, I was thinking as I was walking over here tonight what would be an appropriate thing to say to this particular room full of people. And I was remembering, I was thinking about the last 19 and a half years, and as you can imagine, in that much time, I have, uh, I have pitched a lot of games to a lot of different publishers. And uh, normally, like there's, uh, you know, often, there's some point in the pitch process where the publisher wheels into the room, um, you know, their data anal you know, analytics person. Um, who kind of uh, looks at the game pitch and grimaces a little bit and says that, well, there aren't really any comps for this game, so we can't really confidently forecast how they're going to sell. And I always have two reactions when that happens. So half of me um, is immediately crestfallen because I realize that this publisher is probably not going to fund my game now that the analyst finally said that thing. Um, but of course, the other half of me has the opposite reaction, which is I get very proud for a moment, and I think, hell yeah, there's no comps. That's the whole point. <laughs> Anyway, um, you know, seeing the collection of games that comes together uh, at Indicate every year is uh, incredibly inspirational for me, genuinely, because um, it's this amazing set of games that really uh, are flipping the bird to comps. You know, <laughs> but it's, um, you know, big publishers they by necessity have to make uh, you know first and foremost are focused on. Um, you know, making and publishing games that will make money. That's not a sin, it's what they're there to do, right? But um, it's incredibly uh, refreshing and invigorating to be uh, standing in a room full of people um, who, who really are doing this first and foremost just to make uh, games that are special. Yeah. And experiences that people have never had before, uh, games for which there are no cons. And uh, I just want to thank all of you for every year serving up this platter of games that uh, inspire me and inspire everyone else at Harmonix to keep trying to make good games. Uh, thank you very much, all of you. Please welcome our hosts. And um, now a few more quotes from our jurors. 
I find the defendant guilty on all counts. I'm sorry, that's the wrong question. Um, choice chamber. Hilariously awesome, all around, highly innovative concept. Love the variety of weapons and massive interaction with Twitch viewers. Gemini. This is really beautiful. The sense of codependency with a simple, non-anthropomorphic AI is very evocative. Framed. Novel core interaction, the film noir chase theme lends itself well to the puzzles. Really great. Close your eyes. The level design was excellent in teaching the player new mechanics, and the world building was excellently done. I love the clocks. The next award is the Special Recognition Award. The Special Recognition Award goes to a work of passion, contributing to the cultivation of artistry in games. This award honors the finalist that uses the medium of games in a way that elicits that elusive yet universal experience often associated with any work of true art. Here's what our jury had to say about the winner. This game is proof that, while we might often think of pushing the boundaries of our medium in the context of creating something entirely new, of defying existing paradigms, of finding new methods of expression, one can also push the boundaries of our craft through an unyielding dedication to improvement and perfection of something created over the course of a decade. And the winner is N++. Hello. Um, so Reagan and Mayor. What? No, I don't hold it. I have a phone. In my, I have a phone in my hand. I have to read something. Yeah. So Reagan and Mayor. Uh, uh, couldn't be here, uh, so just what the audience should do is imagine two of my favorite people standing on the stage. I think everyone in the audience can do that. Um, and they have given a statement which I uh, unfortunately have to read off of my phone. Uh, you should read this uh, in your head in Mayor's voice because Reagan's grumpy and he doesn't really mean it. Uh, okay, thank you so, so much. We wish we could be here uh, in person to accept this award because this is incredibly cool, but we're happy to have Matthew here accept it on our behalf. Uh, thanks to everyone who helped make N++ possible. Thanks to Sean, Nick, Massa, our friends and families. And everyone's given us input, motivation, or support. And thank you to Indicate. This means a great deal to us, because the very first version of this game, N, won the Audience Choice Award at Slam Dance in 2006. So for N++, the final chapter in the series to be recognized here today, makes this long journey worthwhile. Now all we have to do is finish it. <laughs> Slam Dance 2006. The next award, the last award actually, uh, is the Grand Jury Award. Woo! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. The Grand Jury Award allows Indicate's jurors to select a game that they feel deserves a special citation for overall excellence. The description says it could be a game that couldn't fit into any other category, but that's an old description. And more often than not now, it's a game that excels in almost all categories. Here's what the jury had to say about the winner. Some of the most interesting territory being explored by games lies at the intersection of a designed experience and the player's freedom to shape, bend, or even shatter that experience. This year's Grand Jury Prize winner is a game that exposes its own underpinnings to the player, giving its protagonist the ability to tweak variables, adjust AI behaviors, and change the game's own code in her quest to save a stylishly illustrated storybook kingdom. The winner is Hack and Slash. Yeah! I'm absolutely humbled by the amount of talent and creativity in this room. There's so many great games. It's just an honor to be amongst these, this group of people. Um, I, the, I wish the team could be here to accept this, but on their behalf, thank you so much.